Welcome to today's episode of the Arena Sports Show with me, your host, Helga Schutz. Well, today we've got cricket, there's rugby, cycling and volleyball news. But let's start off with cricket. And the annual prize-giving awards of Crickets Namibia were held on Saturday night at the Safari Hotel. It was a glittering occasion and the top awards went to Gerard Erasmus and Sune Wittmann as Namibia's male and female players of the year. Well, Gerard wasn't there. He's currently playing professionally in Canada. But his father, Francois Erasmus, was there. I caught up with him, so let's hear what he had to say. Yeah, I'm proud. I'm a proud dad. I mean, the guy's been working hard for, for about 12 years now in the national setup, and uh, I think he's starting to. He's now reaping the rewards, and it's a, it's a testament testimony to his um, his uh, absolute, you know, love for the game, and he just lives for. He breathes cricket. So yeah, I think that's just reward for him. Right, so why is Francois Gerard not here tonight? Gerard's playing in Canada um, in the GT uh, T20. It's a, it's a franchise tournament in Canada together with four other Namibians. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity for them to get exposed to these franchise tournaments, earn a bit of extra income, but also play with some world class players. So he's actually starting in five minutes with the match. Fantastic. And uh, Francois, it was a wonderful evening, lots of prize winners. And one gets the feeling that Cricket Namibia is on the move. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's just been a fantastic um, run in the last five, six years. And I see what we see saw tonight is that the game is actually catching up, uh, catching on right across Namibia in all 14 um, regions of the country. Fantastic to see the, uh, the, benef- uh, the fruits that Cricket Namibia is, is bearing from their efforts, winning the uh, Global Development Award for the third, third year running. We had a fantastic uh, stats tonight of um, in the in the in the development sector that one third of all uh, players uh, in the development sector is from Namibia, out of the whole of Africa, which is just fantastic. We have 2.5 million people, and we we uh, achieving those results against countries like Nigeria with 200 million people. Right, and then of course, in a few years' time, 27, I think. We'll be hosting the Cricket World Cup. So how are you feeling about that? It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we had some commitment tonight from the government on uh, creating a, a Cricket Namibia uh, home venue, which we haven't had, we ever had in Namibia, which will be fantastic. Because also in 2026, we're hosting the Under-19 World Cup for men. And then in 2027, we're co-hosting with South Africa and, and, uh, and Zimbabwe. And as I understand it, we'll have at, have at least four international World Cup matches here in, in Bantuk and it's just such a fantastic fantastic achievement and I just hope that government and the private sector buys into this because it's going to be massive for them maybe also by way of tourism foreign value coming into the country and I think we should just all be very very grateful about this opportunity but also embrace it. Francois Rasmus there a proud dad indeed. Well, as he mentioned, Gerard was playing in Canada, where he's playing for the Toronto Nationals. There's several other Namibians also playing, like Ruben Trimpelman, Bernard Skoltz, Jan Freilink and JJ Smith. So good luck to all of them there. Let's carry on with rugby, and the Namibia Premier League continued with matches over the weekend. And in a thriller at the UNAM Stadium, UNAM lost to Rehobot 31-25. After the game, I spoke to the opposing captains, that's Graeme April of UNAM and Kevin Kluter of Rehobot. So let's take a look. Um, it, it was a tough game. Um, UNAM gave us some good, op- uh, some good opposition. Um, we know it was hard coming to this game, um, playing UNAM at home and seeing that they, uh, the past few games they were, they were brilliant. But well, we've stuck in the game. Um, we, uh, we stick to our ports, we stick to our game plan and it came through for us. Right, and in terms of the lock position, very important win. So do you think you'll make the semis now? Um, it, it's, it's still a long shot. Um, we, we, we don't know what, what happened in Rehoboth between um, uh, Suburbs and, 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 and Fjelkens. But um, we are getting there. Um, so this win was very important for us, keeping our hopes alive. So next week we are off and the week after that we are getting Kudus at home in Rehoboth. So we, all, all, we are hoping for the best. Right, Kevin, we could see you guys were really fired up 
So um, just tell us about how you approached the game. Um, this, this week was a tough uh, physical week for us and also an emotional week for us. Um, Hodok, um, we played for the Hodok Cup. It was, it was our brother, it was our teammate, it was our, our friend. So we gave everything for him playing this game. Uh, we were down um, um, in the second half and then we, we, we fought back. We fought very hard back. And, uh, and as we know, Yunami is, is a, it's a tough game um, to play here at, at the home. Yeah, uh, game was a bit tough. Uh, game was also a bit loose. And we also, as we all know, Rebert likes to play a loose game. Um, and that went to their advantage at the end of the day. We made silly mistakes from our side. And that's how they got the lead on us. But other than that, game was really good. Right. Graham, it was quite a crucial game in terms of the log and the semi-finals. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, like you said, uh, quite a crucial game for both teams. Um, so currently, uh, yeah, we had to win this game in order to, follow, to get the top four spot. Top four spot automatically qualifies you for the semi-finals. But yeah, two games still ahead of us. So hopefully we can pull those ones through. So you're still hopeful of reaching the semis? We're still hopeful. Spurs are still high within the group. So we yeah, are definitely not uh, demotivated or anything. But yeah, Spurs are high. Great. Good luck. Thanks. And in other matches over the weekend, Kudus beat Grootfontein 52-31 and Western Suburbs beat Rio Falcon 44-22. So let's take a look at the latest log standing after the weekend's matches. Right, let's move on to women's rugby and Yunam got back to winning ways after beating Rehobot 36-0 on Saturday. After the game, I spoke to the opposing captains, Elzand Lee Basson of Yunam and Pione van Royen of Rehobot, so let's hear what they had to say. It was a tough game, for sure. Um, How does it help you on the log position? It's, it's taking us a step forward, achieving our goal, but we still have to improve. So you think you can make the semi-finals? Most definitely. I believe in my goal. I know that we can do it. It was a tough game. Yunam is a strong team. We had a tough time. It's also a good game. Um, great for us to go and work on things back at the end Right, and how's this league been for you as a whole over the season? It was tough, like we have a lot of new players coming in. So yeah, every time we play a game, we have to... Um, yeah. It's a bit tough, but yeah. do you think you're um, developing for the future? Yeah, we are developing. Like, there's a lot of new players, we try to be hard. Let's move on to volleyball and the Comas Volleyball Association's Premier League continued with matches in Vintuk. Now in the men's division, NDFA remained at the top of the log. They beat Nast 3-0 on Saturday. And after the game, I spoke to NDF captain Daniel Asser. Let's take a look. Uh, the game was fine, at least uh, because uh, three points, uh, three zero. No, no, we didn't give away the, the state. At least we are fighting for the for the league. So we are still pushing for, for the next game that we are playing again, the, the last uh, game of the day. Right, Daniel, and you guys have had a great season so far on top of the log. So tell us, how's your season gone? 
Well, they, 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 the league is very tough because we lost uh, 3 0 to KNDC, but we are fighting for the, with them uh, the, the, the league. And we are supposed that we should get some faith from them. Uh, well, uh, if we happen to finish all the, the games that we left with, and then they finish there without losing anything, we we'll get uh, equal points. Then from there, I don't know what to determine from points uh, if we have equal points. Right, but tell us a bit about your team and do you think you can win the league? My team is, is, is really pushing, but I don't know. We'll see uh, at the end of the season. I think they, they, the, the champion will just be determined on the last game of the league. Right. And just tell us about volleyball in general. Um, is it quite a popular sport and um, is there lots of um, support for it? Yeah, it's, uh, at least it's, uh, it's, it's, going, it's going up, we are pushing, but somewhere, somehow we are still struggling with, uh, with, uh, with financial, so that's why we are, the fans, uh, the fans, about the fans, uh, we have a lot of fans, we are, we are putting it on top, and it's still, uh, it's going Moving on to cycling, and Namibian cyclists did very well at the South African Cross Country Series that was in Peter Maritzburg on Saturday, with several of our junior riders winning medals. In the youth men category, Namibia took the top two places, with Roger Turen winning the gold medal in 56 minutes and 53 seconds, while Marco Thiel finished 10 seconds behind to claim the silver medal. Another Namibian cyclist, Sean Lowe, finished 6th and compatriot Franco Thiel, 28th out of a total of 35 riders. In the junior men's race, Daniel Hahn was pipped to the gold medal by South Africa's Omar Wilson, while Hahn followed 6 seconds behind to claim the silver medal. In the youth women's category, Delcia Janse van Fieren won the bronze medal after finishing third behind South Africa's Jody McKinnon and Nadia van Wijk, while Namibia's Rosemary Thiel finished fourth. And congratulations to our junior riders flying the Namibian flag in South Africa. Well done. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. But before we go, I'd just like to inform you that next week I won't be here I'll be in Cape Town for a short break, but I'll be back on the 7th of August, so I'll see you then. But till then, let's take a look at some of the photos of the weekend's sporting action. From me, it's goodbye.